Hello. We are Crossroads Christian Fellowship in La Paz, Baja California, Sur, Mexico. My name is Milton Sanders, and to let you know what we're doing now, we had been doing live webcast of our Sunday morning services for the past few weeks and running into lots of technical difficulties. So this morning we're doing things a little differently. We are actually uploading this in advance, but we will be standing by real time while this is made available at 9 a.m. on Sunday morning, Mountain Daylight Time. So if you're joining us at 9 o'clock, uh, our service will continue for approximately one hour. And after our service, uh, we'll take a break for about 15 minutes. And then you're welcome to join us on Zoom for a prayer meeting. And uh, it gives us a chance to check up on some of our friends and to share some real-time space with them through the web, of course, because of the current situation. Uh, so please, you're welcome to join us for that Zoom meeting. That information will appear at the bottom of the screen near the end of the service. And uh, thank you for finding us. And um, Let's start our service this morning. Good morning and welcome to Crossroads Christian Fellowship. We are very glad that you're with us this morning and our vision here at Crossroads is to share the living water of Jesus with thirsty people. And so whether you're locally or, or internationally, please know that we are absolutely uh, thrilled to have you with us this morning and before we go any further I want to wish a happy Mother's Day to all of our mothers around the world and and even though it might be a little different than normal uh, we do wish you the very best and hope that you know that we appreciate you greatly and your families do as well so Milton's going to share a little video with us after I pray and then we'll go right into singing so with that said let's pray and then we'll watch the video Father, I just thank you so much for this time together. I thank you that we can get together through this medium in the middle of this crisis. And Lord, we know that you are seated on the throne and that you reign forever and that you have promised us your presence and your person and your purpose in the midst of trials and tribulations. And so, Father, we just continue to commit this whole thing into your hands. And I pray, Father, please, that we wouldn't allow this crisis to go to waste, but we would learn all of the lessons that you have for us through this. We do pray, Father, in Jesus' name for each one of our families and their children and their grandchildren and great-grandchildren and pray your rich blessings upon them. So as we look to your word, as we sing the, your music today, Father, may we, may be, we be able to worship you in spirit and in truth. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, let's watch the video.
Good morning, Crossroads. Um, happy Mother's Day. I'm glad to be here to um, worship the Lord and be with you through this streaming that we could uh, do it together. Uh, so let's start singing, um, saying praise Adonai. Now let's try with Lay Me Down.
okay, now let's sing Build Your Kingdom here. Two, two, four. <laughs>
The last song, Build Your Kingdom Here, I think really um, alludes to what we're going to be talking about here today and, and really informs, I think, how we should be praying as Christians in a general sense. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And so please open your Bibles to Leviticus chapter 1. We're going to kind of dive into the book today. We're just going to look at the first verse uh, because I think it has some very important truths for us. But I want to continue to kind of set the background for what we're looking at here. And we've already seen how Moses has uh, built the tabernacle in the book of Exodus. God has filled the tabernacle. And now he is going to give Moses the directions for how God's people are going to worship him. So let's read Leviticus chapter 1, verse 1. And I've entitled this teaching, Does God Still Speak to His People? Leviticus 1, 1. And then God called to Moses and spoke to him from the tabernacle, saying. And so the tabernacle's built, the presence of God is filled it, and now God speaks directly to his people. And he calls Moses to give him the instructions for how to worship him in an acceptable matter. God is holy. His presence is in the tabernacle. And if we don't approach him correctly, um, we're toast. And so the term here that God uses when he called Moses is a Hebrew term that indicates that there's a very important message coming afterwards. It's almost like the double knock we saw in the Old Testament uh, Moses, Moses, take off your shoes for the ground on which you are standing is holy. Samuel, Samuel, um, I, have, I want to speak to you. And in the New Testament, Jesus said, verily, verily, or truly, truly, I say unto you. So that's the same kind of grammatical uh, issue we have here. This, this idea of God calling Moses said there's a very important um, message coming up. And Earlier in Moses' life, he had heard the voice of the Lord as well. Remember, God called him at the burning bush in Exodus chapter 3. On Mount Sinai, God called to Moses and delivered the Ten Commandments. And, and both, in both of these instances, the ground around this whole interaction became holy. Take off your shoes from off your feet, for the ground which you're standing is holy. And so when God interacts with man on earth, his holiness consumes, surrounds, imprints, permeates everything, in a sense, of the whole transaction. So that's what's happening here. God is speaking to Moses from the holy of holies in the tabernacle, from on top of the mercy seat, and that is now the holy place. That is the intersection between heaven and earth. That is where the Israelite people are going to meet their God. And so God is now built. He's going to build in all of the necessary steps for him to be approached in a proper manner. God speaks to his people, and when he does, we ignore his instructions at our own peril. And so it's at this critical junction of the formation of the nation of Israel that God chose to speak audibly to Moses, which in and of itself, without going into, is an amazing thing. God, the creator of heaven and earth, the infinite, almighty, all-knowing, all-seeing, all-powerful God, condescends to, to speak through Moses and give Moses his words to communicate to his people. And so God is speaking to Moses audibly so that he can communicate to the people. And so the question for us is, at least partly, does God still speak to his people today? And if so, how does that come to pass? Um, and the truth of the matter is that the Bible records God speaking audibly to a number of different people uh, throughout the pages of Scripture in Old and New Testaments. He spoke to Moses. He spoke to Joshua. He spoke to Samuel. Uh, Samuel, Samuel. He spoke to Job, Isaiah, Jeremiah. In the New Testament, he spoke to Paul. He spoke to Philip. And so there's this idea of God speaking audibly to certain people uh, throughout history. But we need to remember that even though the Bible records this numerous times, it's still the exception and not the rule. Can God speak audibly to us today? You bet. He can create the heavens and the earth from nothing. He can speak audibly to his people. 
But even in the Bible, when we hear that God spoke through Moses, we still don't really know if it was absolutely for sure an audible voice. It could have been an inner impression. It could have been uh, an inner voice. It could have been something else. And so the, the, the idea is here, can God speak audibly? Absolutely he can. I've heard of people that said they've heard his voice. I've never personally heard it audibly, but I've heard God's voice in many, many other ways. Um, is it the norm for receiving instruction from the Lord? Absolutely not. There are many other ways that God speaks to us in just a, in a clearest manner. Psalm 115.3 says, Our God is in the heavens, and he does whatever he pleases. Can he speak audibly? Sure he can. Uh, but it's not the norm. So how is the norm? God speaks to us in at least three ways. There are more, but he speaks to us through his word. He speaks to us through life's circumstances, and he speaks to us through other people. The primary way God speaks to his children is through the word of God. 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17 says, All scripture is inspired by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be adequate, equipped for every good work. And so here's this idea, Paul referring to the Old Testament, that the Bible speaks to us, it teaches us, it rebukes us, it corrects us, it trains us in righteousness so that we may be adequate. Isaiah 15, 11 says, so is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. And then all of this is kind of wrapped up in 2 Peter 1, 3, when it says this, seeing that his divine power has granted to us everything pertaining to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and excellence. In other words, God speaks primarily through his word. And what is it that he communicates? Everything we need to know concerning how to be saved and how to live the Christian life. So the classical formulation of this principle from uh, 2 Peter 1.3 is this. The Bible contains everything we need to know pertaining to faith and practice. The Bible contains everything we need to know pertaining to faith and practice. In other words, pertaining to faith, everything we need to know about how we, how we can be saved, and practice, everything we need to know about how to live the Christian life. So primarily when we say the word is speaking to us, it's telling us who God is, how we can be saved, and how we can live in the light of that salvation. So as we read, as we meditate, as we study, as we apply the word of God in the power of the Holy Spirit, the Lord speaks to us. And I think we've all had this experience where we're reading the word and we come to a passage that we probably read multiple times, uh, but never really seen it or never really understood it in that way. And we say, wow, I God's speaking to me through his word. I, I, I know I've gone to his word multiple times with a heavy heart and, and a, a verse will come out of the, of the context and comfort my soul. And I'll think, wow, I've never, I never thought about that verse like that before. Or maybe you're reading the word and the Lord uses a certain verse to convict you. Um, that's very common as well. I think of the great church father, Augustine, in the fourth century. And he was walking through a garden when he heard some children playing a game. And up to this time in his life, he'd been drinking and carousing. And he had a relationship with a woman out of wedlock and a, and a bunch of problems. I mean, he was basically in the world uh, living full speed. And so he heard these children playing a game. And they were saying, tole lege, tole lege, which means pick up and read, pick up and read. And he noticed a book sitting on a table and he picked it up and it was open to Romans chapter 13. He wrote he, and he read verses 13 and 14. Let us behave properly as in the day, not in carousing and drunkenness, not in sexual promiscuity and sensuality, not in strife and jealousy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh in regards to its lust. He was soundly converted on the spot. The Bible spoke to him, and he's one of the most famous people in church history. God speaks to us 
through his word. But he also speaks to us through the circumstances in life. I've always maintained that um, the biggest miracle of life is that God can kind of orchestrate hundreds of seemingly uh, different individual events to arrange our circumstances as such that he speaks through them to us in the events of life. Sometimes God works supernaturally or supranaturally over nature. He interrupts things and he, he heals the dead. He brings sight to the blind. Um, he, he raises uh, those who are sick. And so as amazing as that is, it seems like that's pretty easy stuff for the God who created everything with a word. Um, but what always has amazed me is how there's billions of people on the planet and hundreds of millions of Christians, and he can or uh, organize a hundred different events to bring about a circumstance in the life of one believer to, to use that to train him or correct him, or encourage him, or to challenge him, or to humble him, or to change him. And he does that with a hundreds of billion people all at the same time. Um, in 1 Peter 1, Peter was writing to Christians who were suffering real persecution for their faith. And he reminded them of this very same principle in chapter 1, verses 6 and 7. And this is what he said. In this you greatly rejoice... Even though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been distressed by many trials, that the proof of your faith being more precious than gold, which is perishable, even though tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Peter is saying that your life circumstances are being used by God to bring glory and honor and praise to Jesus Christ and to prove your own faith. This letter was most likely written in the time of Nero, and although the persecutions were not empire-wide by any stretch of the imagination, they could be local and they could be very vicious. And so Peter tells them that their life circumstances will prove their faith with the ultimate outcome of what? to bring praise and glory and honor to Jesus Christ and to help them to grow in godliness. He goes on to tell them that if indeed you are followers of Jesus Christ, you will suffer because I suffered. And we all understand this teaching from the Bible. Um, but he says, as you suffer, suffer as Christians, knowing that you always remember the goal. What is the goal? The goal is Christ likeness, Christ likeness from the for the purpose of bringing praise and glory and honor to Jesus Christ. So God speaks to us through his word, primarily. God speaks to us through life circumstances. And finally, he speaks to us through other people. And we need to be a little bit careful uh, about this one. I was a part of a church when I first became a Christian in the United States, and it seemed as though Everybody had a word from the Lord, and there was like this competition, uh, who heard a better word, or who had more words, or who had the word, and so there, there was this like spiritual one-upmanship uh, where, where your Christianity was defined by how many visions or how many words you actually heard, and so I saw some real blessing out of this, but I also saw some real abuse, and so I kind of adopted a policy. When anybody comes to me and says, uh, the Lord spoke to me, uh, and I have a message for you. Typically, I just run, turn and run the other way. I just get it over with. Um, but my antenna go way up. And like I said, that's not to say this isn't a valid way that the Lord speaks to us, because, again, I've been personally blessed by this. But more often than not, I've seen it abused in the church and actually lead to major division. Uh, and so, so here's an example of how I think it should work. Uh, many years ago, I was discipling a young man, and part of the discipleship program or process is personal growth, character growth, uh, individual growth, and so that's always an aspect of any kind of discipleship. And so as I was praying for this young man, the Lord really laid something on my heart uh, about a, a sinful pattern that was in this young man's life that we hadn't talked about heretofore. 
And so the next time we got together, uh, what did I do? I said, thus saith the Lord. Uh, no, I didn't do that. In the middle of discussing problems and, and discussing the challenges of being a single person in a broken world, I just asked him simply, I said, have you ever struggled with X? And his eyes got really big. And he said, how did you know that? And I said, well, I said, the Lord laid it on my heart because he wants you to grow. And it opened up this really great conversation about holiness and sanctification and godliness. And so the point being that I didn't start out with, thus saith the Lord, or the Lord told me to tell you this. I shared the information in a normal context, in a normal conversation, and the Holy Spirit convicted him, thereby confirming that it was from the Lord. He knew it was from the Lord. I didn't have to tell him that. And so if he would have said, no, I don't struggle with X, I wouldn't have said anything, and we would have moved on to something else. And so there are ways to, to weave this whole personal word from the Lord thing into normal conversation where we allow the Holy Spirit to do the confirming, and we don't have to somehow take the credit ourselves because we're some great vehicle of divine blessing. And so I've also had the experience where somebody's told me something instantly, and I was convicted by it. Uh, and I think we all have, and I think we need to do this. We need to sharpen one another through this. And, and so that's the whole point of, of believers loving each other enough and trusting each other enough to be able to speak truths into their life, especially those we believe that God has laid on our hearts. So... God speaks through his word. God speaks through life circumstances. God speaks through people. I think God also speaks through dreams. I don't want to really get into that too much. But as I was writing this message, I remembered my wife telling me last week and that she had had a dream about one of our old um, leaders in Mission to the World when we were down in South America, uh, Rick. And she said, I dreamed about Rick again. And whenever she has these dreams, we always know that we need to pray for people. Many times we'll contact the people pretty quickly just to make sure. And, and you know, nine times out of ten, something serious is really going on. And so as I was writing this, I remember that my wife had mentioned that. And I just emailed Rick. I said, hey, Rick, um, the, the Lord brought you to our attention. Um, I didn't tell him my wife had a dream about him. Uh, but I said, the Lord brought you to our attention, and, and so we're praying for you. His wife died of cancer six months ago, and so we know Rick's going through a difficult time. But I just told him the Lord brought him to our attention and that he should be encouraged that the Lord is, is moving in people's hearts to pray for him. And I hope that was encouraging to him. But again, it wasn't a thus saith the Lord thing. And so God speaks to us in multiple ways, primarily through his word. And so as we wrap this up a little bit, this is a critical part in the book of Leviticus, and God spoke directly to Moses. And next week, we'll actually get into what he said to Moses. Uh, but the question is for us today, are we in a position to hear God's voice and then obey it? And the truth of the matter is that faith the Christian faith is based on God speaking to us. Hebrews 1 tells us that God spoke to us in times gone by through the prophets, but in the latter days he has spoken to us through his son Jesus Christ. John 1.1 1, 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning, and his glory was manifested to us, and he tabernacled among us. So this whole idea of spirit Speaking and relationships is absolutely bedrock to everything we have in the Bible. My wife and I have been married for 25 years now, and I don't know how she's put up with me for so long. Um, but you know what's happened over the years is like there's this sort of kind of nonverbal communication that goes on now. We we just understand what each other's thinking, and it comes from being uh, in communion with one another on a very deep level. She knows everything about me and still loves me. And, and so there's this whole idea where we, we just think the same, and we, we recognize instantly external signs of possible internal turmoil. And so 
we just really know each other. And that's not to be, that's not to say that I don't frustrate her sometimes because I'll expect her to read my mind and then actually to pull something and go do it. And then I'll get mad when she didn't do it. And she said, well, you never told me. And I said, well, you should have known. And so uh, it's not that we don't have those things, but there is this connection of communion where we just understand one another without even speaking. I think that's where we want to get with our relationship with God. The only discernible, the only way to discern the voice of God or the voice of the Lord is to, to spend time with him. And I know this is, this is old news. Yeah, I know. We just need to spend more time with the Lord and everything's wrong with us is we're not in the Bible enough. And uh, the truth is we really just to need, we just really need to spend more time with the Lord. We need to be in the Bible more. Um, but I want you to try this at home and I want you to find a, find a quiet place, pick a, a scripture, preferably a short one, and just repeat it over 10 times really slow. Close your eyes, clear your mind, and say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening, and see what happens. If you're like me, your mind's going a thousand miles an hour, so it takes forever to try to get to that point where you're actually not thinking about something else. Um, but if you practice this, at first you might not hear anything. Uh, a second, you might hear something, but you might not know where it's coming from. But eventually, the Lord's going to impress something very clearly upon your hearts and your minds. And so my encouragement to you is keep practicing this and practicing this. And I can, I can tell you that you'll get to a point where you're so conversational with the, with the Father in heaven that you'll wonder whatever took you so long to figure this out. A conversation takes two people. It takes us speaking and listening and hearing from our Father. And so this whole idea of meditating on the scriptures is one way that we can hear what God is telling us. God speaks through his word. God speaks through life circumstances. God speaks through other people. God speaks through dreams. These are ti the trying times. And if we... Um, don't need a word from the Lord now. I don't know when we ever needed it. If we don't need to hear from our Father, um, I don't know when we've ever needed to. He is desperate to hear your voice in prayer and to communicate his love and care to you. And my experience in life and with this is always that when I, when I think I hear God the clearest, it's almost exclusively for the purposes of encouragement. It's never gloom and doom, prophecies about the end of the world and this person or that person, but it's more about confirmation of his love for me and confirmation of his love for other people. Almost hands down, those are the things that come to my mind when I think about hearing God speak. Um, and I'll say this, and I've said it a million times, God can't love you any more than he does. If you are a believer in Jesus Christ, God cannot love you any more than he does. It's impossible because his love is infinite and it never changes. He can't love you any more and he can't love you any less. Your behavior or personal failings have nothing to do with God's love for you you. And so my guess is, is that God wants to communicate more to you and to me. And what's he want to communicate to us? That he loves us unconditionally. And I think in these trying times, that is a message that we need to hold on to, to assure us that we are his children, to assure us that despite our personal failings, he loves us unconditionally. And the fact that everything is ultimately going to work out. Does God still speak to his people? Absolutely. He speaks to them primarily through his word. He speaks to them through life circumstances. And he speaks to them through other people. What is God saying to you today? Let's pray. Father, I thank you. Uh, that even though you are a, the omnipotent, 
omnipresent, all-powerful God of the universe, you have provided a way for us to not only know you, but to have forgiveness of our sins through a proper atonement or covering for our sins. And Father, we see here in Leviticus that you spoke to Moses. And next week, we're going to begin to unfold what the, the context and what the content of those words were. But for now, Father, we want to believe and we want to practice this idea of, of hearing your voice of being spoken to by you, of having a, a conversation with you. And it's hard for us to slow down. It's hard for us to empty our minds. But I do pray that you will please help us to, to develop this discipline, not just for our own personal edification, but inevitably what happens through this is that this is a communal activity and it's something that permeates the whole community and the whole body of Christ. And so, Father, help us to move in that direction. And I also pray, Father, for your blessing upon every one of the families and people who are listening today. Father, we need you now more than ever. We need your grace more than ever. We need your presence more than ever. And finally, we just pray that you would send revival into this world, that there would be a mighty outpouring of your Holy Spirit in our lives, in our families, in our communities, our churches, our states, our country. Father, make yourself known. Bow the heavens and come down, we pray in Jesus' name, to, to, to let your glory be seen on the earth. And I pray this in the matchless name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, let's uh, worship together with two songs, and then we'll come back for some closing remarks and the benediction. Okay, now let's sing Grace Like Rain. Sing your praise. 
and when we're first begun. here in your presence. Down in your house, fullness of joy, every fear, suddenly wipe away here in your presence all of my gains now fed away every crown no longer on display here in your presence heaven is strength in awe of your wonder The kings and their kingdoms are standing amazed Here in your presence We are on the Here in your presence Heaven and earth become one And to present todo en tu presencia todo se postra ante ti found in your hands fullness of joy every fear suddenly wipe away here in your presence all of my gains now put away every crown no longer on display here in your presence heaven is trembling in awe of your wonder The kings and their kingdoms are standing amazed. Here in your presence, we are all done. Here in your presence, heaven and earth become one. En tu presencia, renuevas todo. Majestad sin igual, espléndido, hermoso, glorioso. Majestad sin igual, wonderful, beautiful, glorious. Majestad in every way, wonderful, beautiful, glorious. Majestad in every way. Come. 
presencia todo se posta ante ti Welcome back, and once again, thank you for being here with us this morning. Uh, just a couple of quick announcements before we get into the benediction. Number one, we'll be having our, our weekly, or at least our Sunday Zoom conference after the service. Um, the link will be sent out by Milton, put on the little streamer on our uh, YouTube page. Um, that'll be at 10 o'clock, so basically in about 15 minutes, We'll get back on and just have a time of prayer where we can connect with one another, pray for one another, and just praise God for what he's doing. And just a reminder, if you want to give, you can go to crossroadslapaz.org or .com and you can give on the donate button. We've still got expenses. I took out some um, food out to the Colonia last week, uh, not last week, yesterday, and so the people were super blessed by that. So we're still out in the community. We're still doing what we can. And so we appreciate as the Lord moves in your heart uh, that you would give as uh, generously as you can. And finally, we just want to pray the benediction over your family and over your life. So close your eyes wherever you're at and extend your hands as I pray for you. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord give, lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, I pray for God's blessing upon your families, upon your lives, upon your children, upon your businesses, upon your jobs, upon your dreams, upon your, um, on your health, upon your mental state. I just pray rich blessings upon you and father we are grateful again for these people so bless them keep them make your face shine upon them we pray these things in the matchless name of jesus christ amen thank you all again for tuning in this morning have a great day and once again happy mother's day to all your mothers god bless see you next week <laughs>